Good evening. Welcome as we join to celebrate and worship today. As is customary, let us begin our prayer together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Please take a moment now to silence your cell phones. Let us place ourselves within God's loving presence. Welcome as we celebrate the third Sunday of the Easter season, when Jesus appears to the apostles after his death, they are afraid. They had not understood what a resurrection meant. Jesus made it clear to them and to us that he is fully alive and active in our lives, especially in those moments when we can teach, heal, and forgive. Please stand. Please join in singing our gathering song, song number 847, Song of the Body of Christ, song number 847. that? Hi, everybody. You lost my place? That's, if that's the biggest problem in your life, honey, you ain't got no trouble. Let me tell you. Right? Where's the third Sunday? Can you remember that? Third? Second Sunday. Anyway. And that, because we had a little glitch, that's all. God is very patient with us. Lent, Easter, up here. It still is Easter, you know. This is the third Sunday of Easter, so we're in the right season, Karen. It's the third right here, honey. Here we go. There we go. All right. The Lord be with you. I hope you had a nice Easter. And, um,. I did, too, as well. Beautiful, beautiful Easter. Very restful Easter, I must say. So let's begin tonight thanking God for bringing us to the table. Amen? Amen. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of Jesus our Lord be with all of you. And with your spirit. My brothers, let's take a moment, open our hearts, let the Holy Spirit do what God does best. That is, try to get to us. Try to get to us. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, and what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. May your people exult forever, O oh God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death but God raised him from the dead. Of this, we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Let us respond to God's word by singing together the refrain of song number 19. Let your face shine upon us. Song number 19.
A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we had an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified. They thought they were seeing a ghost. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? Why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see, I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet, and they were still incredulous for joy, and they were still amazed. And he asked them, have you anything to eat? He gave them a piece of baked, they gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, this is what has been written, that Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all nations Beginning from Jerusalem, you are the witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. With all due respect to the scriptures, I couldn't help thinking that Jesus had to be part Italian. Uh, Only because it was like... uh, 
have you got anything to eat? You, I'll prove to you I am who I am. I can hear my mother still saying, oh, don't worry, it's my son. He always needs something to eat, you know, we gotta eat, oh yeah. At any rate, the very, be the very beginning of this gospel, the two disciples who were on the way to Emmaus, and they ran into Jesus, or vice versa, whichever. They didn't know who he was. Until, uh, as would be a very typical, hospitable type of thing to do, they said, look, we have enjoyed sharing our time with you. You've told, uh, first of all, uh, they, they were amazed. Jesus was kind of playing those two disciples. He's, because he, he met them, they were very, you know, downtrodden. They were sad. They, were, they just went through the death of the Messiah. They, all, that, all that hell that broke out in Jerusalem the weekend before. And he asked them, what are you sad about? And they, they were amazed. They, you, you've, got to, you've got to be the only person in all of Israel that doesn't know what happened this past weekend. Well, then he just started you know, bringing them out a little bit more, a little bit more. Okay, I'll see you. Don't go. Don't go. Come on, eat with us. Again, the table. The table is so important. So then afterwards, they were in, with the other disciples, and they began to tell him, uh, the other disciples, these two guys, this is what the Lord told us, all about the things that had gone through uh, they had, he had gone through what the people were going to have to suffer. And there's still uh, uh, this disbelief, this disbelief. You know, I, for me, as I'm, the, I'm a little kid uh, from Salve, a little Italian boy from Salve. My uh, father was a bartender. Well, we owned our own bar. I only, I only know the bar, growing up behind the bar. Um, I know that, like, every Sunday, uh, the restaurant would, I guess back in those days, the restaurants didn't open on Sunday until 1 o'clock, or the bars. I don't know what it is today. Is it the same? 2 o'clock, maybe? Okay. And we had to make sure, my, my older siblings by then, they had, who had the girlfriend or the wife or the husband or the boyfriend, whoever was going to have Sunday dinner with us, y'all had to be at that table by the time Dad walked in the door. When that restaurant opened and the bartender came in so that my father could come home and eat, we all had to be there. It was like... Uh, it was ritual. It was a ritual. And um, it was at the table. Maybe some younger people, if you're younger than 70 or 50 or 30, maybe or maybe not, it'll make sense to you, the things that I say. But the table is extremely important in memories, in memories. Well, you know, open concept, you sit around a counter, maybe, or you sit, if you're alone or with another, you in front of the TV. Table's not important anymore. Uh, meal time, I hope some of you still have a little bit of force and pressure that you can apply to say, we eat, we eat together, at least every Sunday. Or then today I hear, uh, I heard on the, on the uh, radio this morning, the news, a new living situation now has become more popular than the home. It's the home on wheels. It's the vans, the motor homes. You see them all the time. And uh, they're, they're making a big, the marketing of these things is becoming so popular now for singles or, or elderly couples, whatever. And all I was saying is, first we take the table away from them so we don't gather the people around, and, uh, and now we take the stability of a, a home away, put it on wheels, so nobody knows where they're going, 
or when they're going, but they're going. Is that nuts? You know, it's my opinion. I'm sorry if you agree. And maybe I'm insulting somebody that does that. I can't help it. That's what I think. But I'm saying, is it, I, I'm glad that you can do what you can do. But my point is taking away from the idea of memory. When we sit at the table, I can remember that's where the best conversations were or the darndest best arguments ever were at the table. And we grew up respecting, and I can remember my dad at the head of the table, my mother to his left or right, I don't know which one, and then if I wanted a couple cents to go to the show that afternoon at the cinemas, you know, those were memories that I grew up, and uh, my mother's feast day is the Feast of the Assumption, no matter what day it fell on, because her name was Asunta, and uh, we all had to be at our home to go to St. Cecilia's Church in Salve to Mass for Mom, and then come back, and she would have a big, it was bigger than Easter. You'd think Easter was big now. Easter was, the Feast of the Assumption was bigger than Easter. I'll respect God. At any rate, it, it was, um, it's a memory I still have when I'm home eating alone. And it gives me life. And it's interesting that when Jesus wanted his family, his disciples, to remember him, it was always at the table. Ultimately, that's why the, the table, the altar, you can never do enough to, I mean, keep it simple or beautiful. The table and what happens at that table is in obedience to the command that our founder, Jesus, gives us when you're at this table and you take bread and you drink my precious blood. You remember what I've done for you, good, bad, or indifferent that you may be in whatever strait you're in. Remember that it's at this table, I'm telling you, no matter what, you're always loved by me. You're always loved by my Father. And it's interesting at the table, which the pulpit, as I told you once before, the, the, the church calls the pulpit, doesn't that call the pulpit? That's the incorrect name for pulpit. It's called the table of the word. So that when, I, when the lector opens the word and proclaims it, and then the priest or deacon, whichever, comes up and breaks open this word, this is to feed you with what is so important in our relationship with Jesus Christ. With, it's, it, he reminds us. He says, look, at, I'm not dead. I'll prove it to you. Give me something to eat. Humorous is that, I take it humorously, but it's, it's remembering what happened at the table of the Last Supper, that we're here. That's why we're here. Do this in memory. Know that no matter what you go through, what you suffer, how the table may be broken down in your life, and how you only have your memories, and maybe some people have no more memories of, their, of those times, good or bad, that Jesus Christ never abandons us. In fact, oh gosh, the, the, the Eucharistic minister, I just pointed to her, for, what's her name, what was her name? Yeah, the, the, where are you? She's wearing a, a, a pin of the, of the Blessed Sacrament. Where are you? Did you go away? She's got a little pin on of the Blessed Sacrament. I said, that, where are you? Back there? Okay. Yeah, there you are. I said, that's beautiful. Where'd you get? She said, when I became a Eucharistic minister, I got that pin. And I said, wow, it, it's a symbol. It reminded me of our faith in Jesus in the Eucharist table 
pens, conversation. It's critical to who we are as a human family. We sit at the table, for example. I know my brothers and sisters weren't all on the same level as fa of faith as my, my mother. My mother's canonized, that's Saint Asunta. I canonized her. But uh, she knew as a mother where her children were, different levels of faith, different levels of holiness, and still, he's my son, he's my, she's my daughter, and I wasn't a priest, I was just a, you know, the fat little brother, that they, and let me tell you, they picked on me too. At any rate, uh, we can all remember the love mom had for us at the table, and I think a mother and a father, maybe, mostly mothers. Mothers always know where their kids are at, with all due respect to dads. And I can remember my father coming down, however. My mother was an extremely uh, significant woman when it came to the table. Oh, I, the table had to be, she would say, Carlo, Get the plenty beat. Get the dishes. Get the good dishes because it's a Sunday. We're going to have the best dishes, the best silverware. Get the the best pundin tablecloth that you can find, uh, and um, it's got to be special because it was Sunday. It was Sunday, and she would always uh, make Sunday this big festival. Because it was, it was the church. People used to tell, set their watches when my mother went to church. But uh, the thing that I say this is that I'm remembering at 84 years of age, although I don't look it, I know it, but at 84 years of age, these memories of what drew us together, good, bad, or indifferent, sinner or saint, in Jesus Christ, they were important, and they're taught in very easy ways by just living a normal daily life and being kind, being forgiving and understanding. Uh, the, the table, very important. That's why I, got, that's why I started off with the, the house on wheels. If you're going here and going there, you're never where you're going to be. And all, you know, that's me, and with all due respect to people. But... Um, I see the first communion class, I saw the banner flying outside when I came in. Holy Communion. When's Holy Communion? Tomorrow? Really? I thought it was going to be in Tomorrow, how wonderful. Well, congratulations to those kids who are making their first communion. You as a parish are receiving them at the table of the Lord. And all those beautiful little kids have seen up to this point, we got to make sure that we're on our toes because they will remember what Jesus is doing. He's coming to them. They don't want, you know, and some kids, and believe me, and in some cases too, where we failed as a, uh, churches that have schools and so forth yet, I don't know if we should have, if we should even be in the school business, but re teaching religion is very important. Uh, some of our kids, some of our, it's all right, honey, don't worry about it. Some of our kids are not even going to remember their first communion day because it was something, that, it wasn't celebrated. I was glad to see the flags waving already, and they're back there already, too. Final story on how important it was for the table in my family. My mother had a friend, she was Irish. She says, I always get along. I, I, maybe I G Irish, she said. She, I liked Irish people, they got along with her. Because I think that when they got together, the Italians always had something to say to each other, you know? At any rate, she loved her Irish friend, Mrs. Hayes. I grew up remembering Mrs. Hayes. They would go to church every morning together. They were neighbors, they walked together. Susie, come on, I'll walk you to church, okay. Then after Mass, my mother would say, you want to come in for a cup of coffee and something to eat? Mrs. Hayes never refused. 
She never refused. But my mother never hesitated to offer hospitality. And there were times my father would come downstairs on his way to the restaurant, 8 o'clock in the morning, and he would say, you know, I'm going to start putting her on our taxes because she's here every day. And she would never let him discourage her sense of hospitality or the table. Now, I remember that. Why? Because I want you to remember, if you would, the importance of coming to the table of the Lord tonight. Ultimate hospitality. Not the only one looking into your heart is God our Father who says, Come. Come up here. Take my son. The two disciples on the road to Emmaus, they couldn't understand when Jesus was giving them this, playing this game with them. What are you all upset about? You don't know. They killed the man. We thought, don't forget, when you come to communion tonight, or at least come up for that blessing, but don't hesitate to get to confession, you're receiving the God who, who does not judge. We judge each other. The Father through Jesus, loves us so much. He just says, take and eat, take and drink. Remember, I invited you to my table. Amen? Amen. Be kind. Can you hear me? Yeah. God's word has been broken so that we will profess our faith. So together we pray. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Got the words? Born of the Virgin Mary, of the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. My brothers and sisters, continuing through our prayers of the faithful, I, want, I would like if you would make the response, Lord, feed us with your love. Make that response. Lord, feed us with your love. Please respond, Lord, feed us with your love. For the church, may our words and actions teach your healing love and your compassionate mercy. May we continually encourage understanding and hospitality that the world may know the promise of new life, we ask. Lord, feed us with your love. Give us the grace to know you as our risen Lord. May we experience your presence. Every time we break bread and share our lives with each other, and every time leaders and governments take steps to heal our world, we ask. Lord, feed us with your love. For all who seek happiness, wholeness, and peace, the poor and the disillusioned, the sick and the searching, the grieving and the despairing, the addicted, depressed, and the broken, may their hope in you never waver and the generosity of others pour out to them, we ask. Lord, feed us with your love. For all who feel bound by their past, imprisoned by this physical or emotional suffering, or by grief or loss, free them to live more fully, we ask. Lord, feed us with your love. May justice and peace flourish in every land. May immigrants be welcomed and cared for. And may God hear the prayers we offer in silence. We ask, 
Lord, feed us with your love. Lord God, our Father, you are the only force that brings us together to your table. And the only force that divides us is Satan, is the devil. Lord, we ask you, give us the love and the understanding. We eat the same body, drink the same blood of Jesus Christ that should heal and bring us together as a people, as families, as friends, even as enemies. We can pray for our enemies. Strengthen us. And where there is any kind of alienation or separation among us in our thoughts, words, or deeds, give us your love. Heal us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join in singing song number 613. The Lord is my hope. Song number 613. pray now with me that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God our Father Almighty. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, Grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit 
in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But during this Easter season, above all, to laud you and praise you more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death. By rising, he has restored our lives. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with all the angelic hosts, they sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. and you always walk with us on our journey of life. Blessed is your Son, present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask you to send the power of your Holy Spirit on our gifts of bread and wine. Make them holy, let them become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he, <coughs> excuse me, he took the chalice. Again, he gave thanks and praise and gave it to them and said, take this, all of you, drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until Therefore, Holy Fathers, we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the offerings of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, 
we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so, having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis, our Pope, and Douglas, our Bishop, with all our bishops, our priests, all our deacons, our people, who you gather together as we walk in your ways, give us faith and hope, so we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ. All the dead, whose faith you alone have known, admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. And give to us also, Lord, when our time on this earth is all done, that we may come to our eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, and Saint Joseph, her husband, and all the apostles and the martyrs, with all our patron saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. as family of God, let us pray to the Father now as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from all evils. Give us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sins. Protect us from all troubles and anxieties as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give to you. Do not look on our sins. Look on our faith. And give us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let's heal each other with a wonderful Easter sign of peace. Yep. Jesus.
He has given us the invitation of the Father to come to his table. Blessed are we who welcome Jesus into our lives. Lord, Lord not worthy to be shattered. Say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe. Our song of communion is song number 823. Behold the Lamb. Song number 823. Blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life.
they attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord.